Oh, Joanna, you're so big now. Last time I saw you, just a little baby. Who are you? I can't believe you're going to graduate soon. Please don't ask, please don't ask. No, 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 no. Please don't, please don't ask. No, are you please, okay? No, no. First of all, that's not a good question to ask. Second of all, yeah, I guess I'm fine. I just thought you were going to ask me a question. Hmm? About what you're going to do now? What do you want to be when you grow up? Growing up, when people asked me this question, I didn't see any problems with it, or at least I never thought that it might be doing more harm than good. I recently watched Michelle Obama's interview. I, I used to tell some of the young people I worked with way back in Chicago days that I used to hate the, the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Because it assumes that at some point you stop becoming and you just are something. And that would be a sad thing, you know, to think that this is it. From this, I realized the implications of this question actually add a lot of unnecessary pressure for us to make future decisions. And I'm bringing this up because like myself in the past, I'm seeing more and more graduates from either high school or uni who just don't know what to do next. Welcome back to Dose of Joy. Let's first unpack this question. What do you want to be? The B in this question implies to me that our jobs define us, that our identity is part to do with our career, or our identity is our career. You can definitely phrase this question differently, like what do you want to do, or what are your plans for the future, but all of them really imply the same thing, that what you end up doing is who you'll become. For example, this is how I imagine it relates to. Hey, how are you? Hey, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm working a lot. Work's pretty intense. Um, I, I got a new boss recently. Here we automatically say things irrelevant to how we're actually feeling and instead listing things that happened at work. Because we associate jobs to be part of our identity, I think this is a reason why we have so much trouble deciding what to do. Since whatever we decide, we sort of have this obligation to commit to this identity. And I really think this comes in part with being asked these questions constantly from an early age, like this. Oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? A dinosaur. You're in high school now. Quite an adult. What are you going to do after? Oh, you just graduated. What are you going to do now? This all makes it seem like our career is our final end goal and what we've worked so hard since we were a kid to achieve. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, by associating our identity with our profession and by thinking of it as a sort of final life goal, it's no surprise that we're putting so much pressure on ourselves to find the right job. And I guess this leads me on to my next point. This question, what do you want to be, really implies that there's only one thing you'll become or one job you'll have. For example, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, a, a, a snake whisperer. Oh, so cute. That's a great job. And, and a ballet teacher and a doctor okay, okay. and... Oh, no, and that's just unrealistic. Basically, we have to pick one job and stick with it, or at least that's what this question implies, and what we sort of begin to believe, either subconsciously or not. And because of this, we have so much trouble deciding because we want to make the perfect choice. For me at least, I just, I know I didn't want to spend all this time and effort working so hard for a job that I just quit later on. For example, when I was growing up, there were so many career options that it just left me feeling overwhelmed. And I thought, how am I supposed to choose when I've only done a few subjects and I haven't even experienced much of life and I don't even know much about myself. Even up until the end of my science undergrad degree, I still thought or subconsciously thought that I had to pick only one job and stick with it for the rest of my life and therefore put a lot of pressure on myself to make the right choice. And this is exactly what I'm seeing right now, that because there are so many courses and options and alternatives to take, we just don't know which one's best for us and so we just have so much trouble deciding if deciding at all. But what I learned at the end of my undergrad degree, or at least really internalized from mentors and alumni, was that people change careers all the time. And it's actually more common for people to change careers than to stick with one for the rest of their life. 
over there I was talking to you know people in their 40s especially one who was working in I think management and a mining industry and then he was just saying that he wanted to sort of run a farm and change paths that way and I thought what <laughs> but in that moment I realized that yes it's very common it's more unrealistic to think that you have to stick to one job for the rest of your life what they all reassured me when I was saying, oh, I don't know what to choose, I might be doing physio, I might be doing teaching, I, I just don't know, it's so hard to decide. And they were like, just try it. Just try it and then just see how it goes. If you don't like it and you've worked hard and you, you still feel like it's not resonating, then switch. And of course what I didn't mention here was that switching is a privilege in itself and maybe your situation might not allow it in terms of debt, etc. So in that case, I do understand that this advice is not applicable. And another thing I've really learned that really feeds into this is saying no to a career. So for example, I grew up saying I wanted to be a pediatrician. And I really think part of that was because when I said pediatrician, when they asked me, everyone went, oh my God, that's amazing. You go, yes, amazing, great. And I loved that attention and I love the approval of other people and I think that spurred me on to think yes being a pediatrician is exactly what I want to do I like children I like helping people pediatrician but I realized later in uni that I wasn't attached to the job of a pediatrician I was attached to the idea of being a pediatrician but then of course I didn't want to waste my waste my science degree or you know do something that was unmedicine related because that's what I always prepped myself to think I was going to do but I guess the mindset that really helped me reframe everything was the fact that medicine for me right now or in that particular moment was not my priority and I just had to keep telling myself that, you know, I'm not going to miss out on medicine. I can come back to it later on in my life if I'm more passionate and more motivated. But in that moment, medicine was not for me. So here are some other things that I've learned from others that have really helped reduce the pressure that I have on myself for finding the right job. Something mentors always reminded me was that skills are very transferable. I know we all worry that if we focus so much on one field and then realize it's not for us, that we're stuck in that one job and that we can't, you know, migrate into another one. But that's, that's just an excuse, I think, and that's an excuse that I told myself as well. It's very possible to relate two different fields and then create a job out of it. For example, like this one that I saw recently about combining maths with arts. Another piece of advice is to approach making future decisions with a sense of fun and just experimenting. I used to find it so, so daunting, especially in high school, to just, you know, choose what I wanted to do and stick with it in the future. And now, like what I've mentioned before, it's so much better and healthier to approach it from, yeah, let's just try it out. Let's just see how it goes. If it's not what I want to do, then at least I've tried it. And this process of elimination has helped me so, so much. And lastly, give yourself a bit of time and space. I am a huge advocate for people to take time to reflect and really understand themselves on a deeper level. This takes knowing yourself and your values and making sure that what you choose in the future doesn't conflict with these values. For example, picking nursing when you really, really need freedom and spontaneity. And if you want to find your own values, I've made a video in the past that can help you do that, which I will link somewhere here or below. And I say give yourself time and space because especially during high school, there is so much external influence from teachers and people and other students that affect your future decisions. And I know I especially got tunnel vision when I was that age and you know, I just went along with the flow and did what other people did. I never took a gap year and to be honest, I didn't see the point in it at that time. But now I really think that it would have been really helpful just because I needed that rest. I needed time to know myself more and not let external factors like my grades and what I studied affect how I would, you know, do in the future. 
And this is not me just saying to everyone, go take a gap year because it's it depends on your particular circumstance. If you don't want to, then don't do it. But for people like me who are lost and just confused, I really think this would help you just to give yourself a bit of time to reflect and know yourself a bit better. So to sum up this video, I want to say that there is no rush to find the perfect job for you if that even exists. And I bring up uni because that, you know, I've personally done it, but uni is not for everyone, of course, and there are so many other alternatives to do to find what you want to do in the future. So yeah, I hope this video really helped you guys out, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!